so some tips and tricks uh, of how to make decision making easier and execution during the surgery easier uh, so more or less that so first and foremost like most intraarticular fractures partial articular fractures ct should be a must in treating these fractures no matter what age of patient veterinary no matter how uh, simple it might look on an x ray uh, but always with a ct ct will always give you so much extra information that you very easily to miss out right so unlike uh, previous years i think nowadays ct is pretty much readily available um, at almost all places in india so that that should not be a concern in getting a ct but uh, we as treating surgeons should make a habit of telling that yes this requires a ct no matter what uh, we will start our planning only once the ct is done because trust me yes shards gas classification is uh, the commonest used and even asked in your exams but uh, i might say the old shards is not the new shards the old shards classification to a certain extent just told us about uh, how to treat in a sense whether it requires a screw or a plate but the classification that most of us fall back on the working classification is this the conferring loose uh, three column classification because that makes understanding of the fracture so easy uh, that once you decide that what all are injured it becomes very very simple practical to decide what approach to be used and what plate has to be done also so Uh, that's what we need to follow, and for that a CT is a must. So, to simplify things, of those who are not aware of this, uh, the Mercedes Benz from the just a minute, let me just say that, that. Yeah, from the midpoint until the anterior border of the uh, uh, lateral condyle, uh, then 120 degrees each. So you will divide it the proximal divide to three quadrants. So that's the medial column, that's the lateral column, and that's the posterior column. Then the posterior column is divided in the midline in posterior, medial, and posterior lateral. that is just to see whether we will require posterior i mean posterior medial posterior lateral or both fixations right so once the axial cut is taken and where do you which cut do you take you take the cut where the fibula head is just seen okay so that's that the more, more or less at the level of the articular surface and we need to see whether there is depression split or both and which all columns are involved because all those columns need to be tacked so also this particular system of classification helps us to determine what was the mode of injury that the patient had now all posterior column fractures means that the limb was in flexion when the patient injured his limb and all anterior very anterior rim part were in hyperextension and somewhere in between is extension okay plus a medial column fracture tells us it was in varus a uh, uh, lateral column fracture tells us it was in valgus so the limb can could have been in varus valgus flexion extension hyper extension also so all these uh, things can combine and we can have a, a certain degree of comminution and involvement of certain parts of the columns so why it is important because now we know now we can imagine that if the limb was in say a varus that means his lateral structures are uh, stretched at least right so we need we need to start thinking whether the lateral lateral soft tissues are also involved whether the lateral column i mean lateral collateral ligament the uh, posterior lateral corneal structures all those are damaged or not we can start looking out for that similarly if the limb was in valgus during injury that means the medial structures are tense it is stretched right? so the patient along with the fracture can also have an mcl injury similarly can have an acl pcl injury all these things so it becomes much easier for us to presume what all uh, structures may be damaged and it helps us in better assess the patients and if it is there definitely it warrants some some other type of a treatment yeah so also what it helps us is in definitive management of this injury so for discussion purpose we are not talking of the span scan plan we are not talking of um, uh, fasciotomy compartment syndrome all those things because those are already been covered and uh, very well there in multiple lectures in the app but uh, what we are here doing is some tips and tricks of when we have a fracture what fixation how and how to get it reduced that's so that's all what we are discuss, going to discuss today so by following the lowest classification what we also understand is how to position the patient and what approach we need okay now zero column fracture means that the fracture line is not exiting out of any column so it is a pure depression type that is schwarzkopf type 3 uh, type of a fracture where there is a intraarticular depression but it's not coming out of any columns okay so that requires a minimal invasive surgery that means we can make a we can make a window on opposite side of the same side punch it out and use bone graft or substitutes and use some minimal screws some people even do it uh, with arthroscopic assisted reduction and fixation so all those minimal invasive techniques can only be done if it's a zero column fracture the moment a column is involved that is the fracture line is exiting through 
either the lateral, medial, or the posterior column, that means it requires some sort of internal fixation with the, preferably with a plate, with a buttress plate or whatever, depending on what the fracture is. But it does require, does warrant a, <coughs> sorry, formal open reduction and internal fixation. So one column fracture, that means either the lateral is gone or medial is gone or posterior is gone. In posterior, it could involve only the posterior lateral or the posterior medial. So depending on that, if it is only medial and lateral, since these are in the anterior part, we can uh, position the patient supine and can take an anterolateral or we can take a medial approach. And if it is uh, posterior, we can take a loose L-shaped approach. If it is only a posterior medial, then we can take a posterior medial approach or medial approach. So we'll come to that uh, thing. So if it's only posterior medial, once again, we can take either in supine or even in prone, doesn't matter. So depending on the surgeon's comfort, we could do either of these. If it's a two column, it is mix and match of this and three column, then it requires buttressing from all sides, okay? And the <clears throat> position could either be two positions that is prone, and then supine, or it could be a floating position. Right? So then once we know that what is done, what then next question comes, what surgical approach we need to use again, uh, like I told, follow the class of column classification, depending on the quadrant on which it is involved. If it is only a medial column that is involved, we require a straight medial approach. If it is a posterior medial approach, I mean, posterior medial column that is involved, it require a posterior medial approach. This could either be done in patient being in supine or prone. If it's an anterolateral, uh, that is a lateral column involvement, then you require an anterolateral approach. This is single uh, column fractures. And if it is a posterior lateral involvement, it requires uh, uh, usually posterior lateral uh, column injuries are not, uh, um, they don't come in isolation. Okay, So they are more often than not having one more involvement, either a posterior medial or an anterolateral or even an uh, medial. okay? So or when there's an isolated posterior lateral, we can go posterior lateral approach, but usually it is associated with some other injuries. So depending on what other injury is there, the surgical approach is thus decided. So if it is a posterior lateral with posterior medial, then we can take a lowest posterior approach, patient is prone. A single approach, we can tackle both posterior medial as well as posterior lateral. If it is along with anterolateral, the best approach would be to uh, position the patient laterally a single approach that is called a frosh approach is the single skin incision, but deep down we have two surgical windows to work with, one anterolateral and one posterolateral. So both the anterolateral part as well as the posterolateral part could be uh, approached and fixed with frosh approach. And then in isolation, if it is there.